Hello students, my name is Neyati Said. Thanks for watching Edupedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is Phylum Analyta. Turn your frustration into fun with your online tutor Neyati Said. So let's proceed towards the Phylum Analyta. Phylum Analyta the fundamental characteristic of this phylum is the division of the body into a linear series of cylindrical segments okay or they are also known as metamers each metamer they consist of a section of a body wall and a compartment of the body cavity with its internal organs okay the external division which may be seen in the common earthworm they correspond to the internal divisions the annelate body consists of head region, trunk and they made up of metamers or you can say segments and an unsegmented terminal region called as pygidium. The outer or the uh, terminal region is known as pygidium. Okay. In some primitive members of the phylum, the metamers are identical or very similar to one another, each containing the same structures. In more advanced forms, there is a tendency towards a consolidation of some segments and a restriction of a certain organs to particular segments. Okay. Because of the soft nature of the annelid body, fossils are not common. Okay. Fossils of uh, tube dwelling polychaetes. They are polychaetes are uh, is a is a class of annelid. They have been found. Fossils of class polychaetes have been found, but there is a scarcely and fossil record for earthworms and none for the leeches. Leeches is the another class of annelid. Okay, so they have true silomates present, which is a partitioned segmentary by partitonial membrane septa. Okay. They are triploblastic in nature, they have bilateral symmetry, they have organ system level of organization, their body is covered with a thin layer of cuticle which is uh, secreted by the ectoderm, it is made up of keratin, okay. They possess longitudinal and circular mu muscles, okay. Cetae, they are the locomotion organs in lower side and some cetae present on the lateral appendages called as parapodia, okay. Body wall is covered with epidermis that is overlaid with the thin and pliant cuticle which is secreted by the epidermal cells. The body wall they consist of well-developed segmentally arranged muscles used for crawling and swimming movements. Most annelids they possess short external bristles called as setae. Okay, they are composed of chitin. Setae are used to grip the soil, to hold the animal in a tube, or to increase the surface area of appendages for swimming. Okay. Now um, see its digestion uh, or digestive system. So the digestive system of annelid they consist of unsegmented gut. Okay, that runs through the middle of the body from the mouth located to the underside of the head to the anus, which is on the pygidium. Pygidium is the terminal end of uh, phylum annelida. Okay, the gut is separated from. Um, body wall by the body cavity called as silom okay the segmented compartments of the silom they are usually separated from each other by thin sheets of tissue called as septa okay which are perforated by the gut and by the blood vessels except in the leeches the silom is fluid filled and functions as a skeleton okay providing the animal with rigidity and resistance necessary for muscular movement. If the worm is punctured, just suppose if the worm is punctured, then it loses its ability to move properly. Since functioning of the body muscles is dependent on the maintenance of the fluid volume in the silom. Okay. In uh, you can say in primitive annelids, each compartment of the silom is connected to the outside by ducts for the release of the sex cells. Okay. 
and by paired excretory organs or nephridia okay these openings are closed except when functioning thus preventing the loss of the silomic fluid more advanced species both excretory and reproductive functions are sometimes served by a single type of duct and ducts may be absent in certain segments now come to its uh, circulatory system we have uh, just studied about a digestive system now the next is circulatory system okay i hope digestive system of uh, phylum annelida is clear to you all now come to the circulation part they have closed circulatory system that means a heart is seen with one dorsal and one ventral blood vessels okay characteristic of a circulatory system vary within the phylum okay the blood usually contains hemoglobin a red oxygen carrying pigment okay some annelids have a green oxygen carrying pigment and others have unpigmented blood okay the circulatory system is usually closed that is confined within well developed blood vessels in some polychaetes and leeches the circulatory system is partly open with blood and silomic fluid that mixes directly in the sinuses of the body cavity okay blood flows towards the head through a contractile vessel above the gut and returns to the terminal region through vessels below the gut distributed to each body compartment by lateral vessels okay some of the lateral vessels are contractile and they serve as heart that is the pumping organ for driving the blood okay now if we see its respiration respiration is uh, by skin uh, which is found in the moist condition nephridia they help in osmoregulation and excretion okay nervous system nervous system typically consists of a primitive brain or ganglionic mass which is located in the head region which are connected by the ring of nerves to the ventral nerve cord that runs the length of the body the cord give rise to lateral nerves and ganglia in each segment sense organs of annelids they are generally include eyes taste buds tail tentacles and organs of equilibrium called as statocyst okay now come to its reproduction part sexes are separate as you can see that sexes are separate means they are not hermaphrodite except in leech and earthworm they are hermaphrodite that means sexes are not separate okay reproduction is sexual as well as asexual asexual reproduction is by fragmentation budding or fission okay among sexually reproducing annelids hermaphrodites are very common but most species have separate sexes fertilized eggs of marine annelids usually develop into free swimming larvae eggs of terrestrial form are enclosed in cocoons okay and they hatch as miniature version of the adult the ability to regenerate lost body part is highly developed in many polychaetes and digochaetes now we will be discussing about the classes larva is ocupore okay example such as fretima that is uh, earthworm which is commonly known as earthworm hirudinaria that means blood suckers or leeches nereis and aphrodite okay this is the typical representation of annelida phylum okay and this is the representation of nereis hmm there are three classes Hmm. of annelids classes polychaete which are marine annelids okay classes oligochaeta which are marine freshwater and terrestrial annelids earthworms are an example of it and the third class is hirudinia which are marine freshwater and terrestrial leeches okay now we will be discussing about the class polychaeta 
The polychaetes are so named because of the numerous setae, which are locomotion organs. Okay. The vast majority of more than 8,000 known species of polychaete worms are marine. Some, however, are found in fresh water. They are abundant from the intertidal zone to depths of over 5,000 meters. Okay. Their colors are often brilliant and some species are goniochromism. Goniochromism is a property that appears to change the color as the angle of illumination changes or as the angle of uh, view changes. Okay. This is the representation of uh, class polyketa. As you can see that they have many uh, ketas. Okay. Now come to its second class that is class oligoketa. This class includes about 1500 species of earthworm and freshwater worms. The members of this class range in length from about 1 by 32 inches to 10 feet, but most are comparable to the polychaetes in sizes. Okay? They are mostly borrowers in the soil, but the class also include worms that inhabit wells, marshes, and swamps or you can say marshy areas other species they live under rocks on the seashore in the leaves of tropical trees and vines okay if we see its uh, anatomy this is the representation of class oligoketa if we see its anatomy like the polychaetes oligoketes have bodies divided into segments as you can see these are the segments Okay. However, they lack parapodia which are used for the locomotion. So, they lack parapodia and with a few exceptions, they have relatively few and inconspicuous setae. The setae are usually arranged in four bundles on each segment. Okay. Those of aquatic forms are longer than those of land forms. The setae of an earthworm may be felt as a roughness if one rubs a finger along its side. Oligochaetes are less varied in their external form than the polychaetes but are much more numerous. As many as 4000 oligochaetes have been counted in one square meter of lake bottom. Okay, In almost all oligochaetes the head is simple cone shaped as you can see that its uh, head is like a cone shaped structure without sensory appendages that means it has head that does not have sensory appendages light is detected by photoreceptor cells in the skin its skin has photoreceptors in it which senses light and which are usually concentrated towards the front of the animal means they are concentrated uh, towards the front end of this class oligochaeta okay now come to the third class that is class hirodina okay the this class includes 500 species of leeches leeches is an example of class hirodina or they are also known as blood suckers okay they are flattened, predaceous or parasitic annelids which are equipped or which you can say which are supplemented by suckers which are used for creeping. Okay. Which are used for creeping or uh, that helps in the gripping of uh, Herodina to the host cell. Okay. They are commonly black, brown, red and may have stripes or spots on them. Okay, the majority of leeches are predators on small intervertebrates. Most swallow their prey as a whole, but some they suck the soft part from their victims. They suck only the soft part from their victims or their host. Okay, some leeches are parasites rather than predators and suck the body fluid of their victims without killing them. Okay. The distinction is not sharp as many predatory leeches take blood meals on occasion. Okay. If we see its anatomy, 
Leeches are the only annelids with a fixed number that is 34 of body segments. Each segment has three subdivisions known as annuli. A cytillum, which is a less conspicuous than that of oligochaetes, is present. There are no parapodias in it. Like earthworms, a leech has a small anterior sucker and a large posterior one. Okay, that means it has a, a small anterior circle whereas they have, this is the uh, posterior end and they have the large suckers. Okay, a leech crawls by moving the anterior circle forward, attaching it and drawing up the posterior sucker. Most leeches can swim by rapid undulation of the body using well developed muscles of the body wall. Okay. The stilum differs from that of other annelids in that it is largely filled in with tissues. Okay. Silomic fluid is contained in the system of sinuses, which in some leeches function as a circulatory system. There is a tendency in this group towards the loss of true blood vessels. The blood of some leeches is red, in others the blood lack oxygen carrying pigment and is therefore colorless okay the sense organs they consist of sensory cells of various types including photoreceptor cells scattered over the body surface there are also two to ten eyes they are which consist of clusters of photoreceptor cells and which are located towards the front of the body this is the front end okay These are the representation of uh, three classes of phylum annelida. So this comes to an end of the cube.